Cyclonic circulation, a term routinely encountered in daily weather bulletins. What is it and how does it affect the weather pattern for any given region? This is the focus of today's video. The swirling motion of air and known as wind is what gives us what we all know as the weather. Winds are a direct result of differential heating over ocean and land and the rotation of the earth. For an observer positioned in a non-rotating frame of reference in the northern hemisphere, earth's rotation would be perceived as anti-clockwise and in the southern hemisphere it would be clockwise. The swirling moment of air or wind flow in either clockwise or anti-clockwise direction gives us cyclonic and anti-cyclonic motions. If wind flows in the same direction as the rotation of the earth, then we have a cyclonic system or also known as the low pressure system. When wind flows in the direction opposite to the rotation of the earth, we have an anticyclonic system or a high pressure system. To put this in perspective for our Indian subcontinent, anti-clockwise motion of winds in the northern hemisphere is associated with a low pressure system. The clockwise motion of wind would mean a high pressure. A low pressure area is a region where the air pressure is lower than the surrounding regions. Now, what causes the formation of low pressure? Simply put, a low pressure region arises when there is warming on the surface. As the air rises, it pulls the wind towards this warming region to fill the void. As the wind flows, it comes from a larger area to a smaller area. From the well-known continuity equation, as the area reduces, the wind speed increases, which results in the low pressure area. A low pressure area is always associated with inclement weather in the form of cloudy skies and strong winds due to massive convergence that leads to vertical updraft and cloud formation. A well-known example is a cyclone which initially starts as a low pressure area, a process called cyclogenesis. On the contrary, the high pressure area is a region where the atmospheric pressure at the surface of the planet is more than the surrounding regions. In high pressure or anticyclonic region, the winds now diverge outwards. Hence, the winds move from a smaller area to a larger area, thereby reducing the wind speed. High pressure areas are usually associated with light winds, clear skies and hot weather. How to find a low pressure area? Earlier, MET departments very frequently would release what was called the synoptic charts. And based on that, newspapers would inform the public whether a low pressure has formed or not. Now with the advent of technology, things have become easy. All that you need to do is just go to websites like mausam.imd.com or windy.com. Just see at 850 HPA whether you see any markings with the letter L. You can also look for wind patterns to determine regions of low and high pressure. If the wind is anti-clockwise or cyclonic in the northern Indian Ocean, then it means low pressure has formed. Depending on the wind speed, the low pressure may be strong or weak. The opposite direction of the wind would mean a high pressure or an anticyclone sitting somewhere. Take this as an activity and see how many lows you could notice at any given point of time over a region. Do that repeatedly for a few days and you will definitely see some of the lows that you spotted would gradually strengthen and become intense pressure systems. Around the same time, the MET department would give us a warning that a deep depression had formed or for that matter, a cyclone had formed. And hey, you would have successfully tracked the low and that's the best feeling. But remember one thing very very clearly. Not all low pressure areas end up as cyclones. For a cyclone, a low pressure area is a starting point but that is not the only factor involved. But if the atmospheric factors as well as the ocean related factors are favorable, then we would be having a cyclone more often than not. 
so you would be definitely in for a surprise where you would see most L's that you spot ending as just a low pressure area. The complementary aspect of a low pressure area is called the high pressure area and it is usually denoted by a H in the weather charts. Technically, they are called ridges and they play a role of guiding the low pressure systems towards a particular region. Usually, high pressure areas can be found above, below or adjacent to a low pressure system. The high pressure systems are important since if there is a high pressure somewhere, then somewhere close to it, low pressure should be present. The reason is the divergence of winds must be compensated by convergence to maintain the airflow. Therefore, low pressure and high pressure systems are like yin and yang where they support each other. But in the end, it is the low pressure that causes heavy damage in the form of extreme rains, flooding, cyclones, etc. A low pressure area is a starting point of complex weather systems. And for a weather enthusiast, understanding is one thing, but identification of a low pressure system is the most important basic thing to do without which we would not have the clarity about depressions, deep depressions or cyclones. We have not discussed here anything about related complex factors like Coriolis effect or divergence but you have made it in a way that next time when you open a weather chart you would be in a position to understand where to spot what. And to us that is the first and foremost thing to do to understand weather and the related dynamics. We hope you would appreciate the broad idea discussed here and with that in the background, this is Guru Aravind signing off for MedConnect.